Hey everyone, and welcome back to the final part of our series on recommender systems. So far, we have explored content-based filtering, which uses item features and collaborative filtering, which models users' preferences from past interactions. Today, we are turning our attention to the real-world difficulties you'll face when building these systems. Because, as elegant as the theory can be, getting a recommender system to perform well in production is often much harder than it sounds. But we are not slapping at the problems. We'll also look at some of the solutions that practitioners use to tackle these challenges. Let's start with data sparsity. As we discussed in the last video, real-world user item matrices are often extremely sparse, and most users interact with only a tiny fraction of available content. This makes it hard to accurately predict preferences. One effective approach here is to apply dimensionality reduction techniques like matrix factorization, which we touch in our collaborative filtering video. Another strategy is to use implicit feedback signals that are more dense, such as clicks, views, or purchase histories, which are usually far more abundant than explicit ratings. Now, the cold star problem, which implies that we don't have much information about new users or items that are added in our system. For new users, we often ask for some initial preferences when they sign up, maybe their favorite genres or a few books they have enjoyed. This helps keystart their profile. For new items, content-based methods can help. Even if a new book has no ratings yet, we can still recommend it based on its features. Next, let's talk about biases. User behavior data is often skewed by population bias, where popular books get more visibility and therefore more ratings, making them even more popular. One solution is to incorporate diversity-aware ranking algorithms that adjust for popularity and promote less exposed items. Also, a subset of this is the positivity bias problem, where users mainly rate books they like. To counter this, we can use more implicit signals, like tracking the time spent reading or whether users finished a book, which can give a richer picture of preferences beyond just positive ratings. And finally, scalability and performance. As platforms grow, computing personalized recommendations for millions of users in real time becomes a serious challenge. Efficient algorithms like approximate nearest neighbors can speed up similarity searches. Also, pre-computing recommendations offline using batch processing and catching popular results can reduce the load during peak times. Furthermore, distributed systems like Spark and Parallel Processing also play a huge role in scaling collaborative filtering and matrix factorization methods. And those are the key methods that can help overcome the toughest challenges in building recommender systems. There are certainly more, but those are the most common ones. And to recap, we tackled data sparsity with matrix factorization and implicit feedback, addressed the cold star problem using initial preferences and content-based methods, mitigated biases with diversity-aware ranking and implicit behavior signals, and ensured scalability with methods like pre-computing and distributed systems. If you enjoyed this series, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks so much for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye!